Everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Kat. Hello. Hi. Hey. So, so Kat, so for folks that don't know you, who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? Um, who am I? I am Kat Schneider. I'm the I'm the wizard that uh, everybody refers to, or at least that's what I've started going by is the wizard. Um, but I am in Florida. I work for a company in uh, Napa Valley, California, oh. called Insight. And I am basically a power platform developer for them. So this is my first IT job, career switcher over here. Oh, proper. So, so you were, you were well, as we say, you were in industry prior? I was in the government public sector ah, prior to this for okay. 15 years or almost 15 years. So, yes. Well, there's an adventure. I've, you know, just telling this again to somebody, it's like I've worked in with product companies that have had huge public sector uh, divisions, like, never touched the space, never really like, <laughs> occasionally I'm brought in as the product guy and the talking people. I know plenty of people that are in it. it's like, but never had any activity in it. So how is it? How, how what's the difference you know, b- between oh. government and non-gov? So biggest difference is actually the information that gets put out on documentation for things that work and don't work actually work because I'm in the commercial space. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas before, you know, I'd spend a couple of hours trying to make something work that I saw, you know, either Shane Young or Matt Zavaney or, you know, anybody putting out there. And it was like, yeah, this doesn't work because this doesn't apply to GCC tenants like it. Sorry. And it's only like written somewhere deep down in the documentation somewhere that you're like, I just spent four hours working on this. Why? (laughs) You know, you would think that there would be like some enterprising uh, MVP or somebody that would put up just a real simple chart, a comparison thing. Are you doing that? Are you building that? I I am attempting to actually provide GCC specific content. So anybody who's working in the U.S. territories that are in GCC, that's what I'm attempting to put together because that's what I did for 15 years is I was in GCC. I was trying to make SharePoint work, trying to make power apps and power automate work. And are you, are, and are you so, so I could go, let's say, go to your site. Will I be able to find, here's the feature in commercial. Here's the, in GCC, here's what's works in GCC high. Like, are you doing that kind of comparison? Not quite that much, but what I am attempting to do is I'm attempting to build up my content on my website so that anybody who's starting in the power platform they can get into it and actually start to understand the bits and pieces starting from the beginning, starting from your data. What is this type of data? Why is it important? How does it get used, consumed, put spit back out because of it going through the power apps or power automate or power BI, whatever, Mm -hmm. whatever it is. But then also like giving some tips and tricks on, you know, various things that, some people just didn't really think of when they were using power apps like power apps is my my thing like Mm -hmm. I love power apps um because it essentially is what I was doing in excel building in macros and and all of that but online with easier access to the data instead of having to go through odbc connections and, and trying to verify that this is there and that's over there and everything's working together so we started down the path talking about like how have you got in? Okay, what was your path to becoming an MVP? So you were do, building this stuff. So kind of who discovered you? What was the story there? <laughs> so working in the government space for 15 years, there there's no real like even thought to going down MVP because MVP just does not apply to anybody in the public sector. Um, there's ethical bits and pieces associated with that. Mm-hmm. So I was actually helping build community within our organizations. Like I presented at our OIT statewide meeting, I think in August of 2020, um, the Power BI report that I'd spent a month working on going, hey, look at this really cool feature and look at all these amazing things that you can do with Power BI. Almost immediately switched it up to Power Apps and Power Automate and I think in October is when we started with our 
community of practice. And it was just like, I think five, six of us. Mm -hmm. By the time I left the organization, we were up over 300 members within the organization that were in this community of practice. Mm -hmm. And it was more than just Power BI. It was the entire Power Platform plus SharePoint plus Teams, all of that. And just anybody and everybody who wanted to work or learn or grow within the the power platform and teams like we we were just there for each other and we kind of had like an internal group that you know you see out on on the internet in the community as a larger group but then I went to the Microsoft Power Platform conference on a whim I was like Hmm. if I'm gonna go do power platform stuff let me go to the the first power platform conference went to that I met up with or actually I presented during the community call mm-hmm. at live in person um, in my wizard robes and my wand. <laughs> <laughs> but Chris Cognetta came up to me afterwards and he was like, hey, I want to talk to you about getting Microsoft MVP. Like you seem like the perfect personality for somebody who wants to be an MVP. And I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's kind of cool. I hadn't even really thought about that. Um, because I was in public sector. So it wasn't something that I thought I'd ever get. Yeah. Um, and then ended up accepting the, the job that I'm in now. And back in April, like mid April is when I guess the summit was going on or the MVP summit. Yep. And Chris had emailed me like that the end of it the Thursday, something like that. And he's Mm -hmm. like, Hey, I just wanted to let you know, I just nominated you for MVP. And I was like, Oh my God, seriously. (laughs) So I got that, um, that afternoon and everybody's like, you got to fill it out now. You got to do it now. I was like, okay, cool. (laughs) Filling it out before the end of April. So I could get it in for the the month of May to be considered. And then June 1st, I got the email that says, Hey, you're an MVP. Congratulations. So, so now that you're a seasoned month long MVP, like what, what are your takeaways from that process? <laughs> <laughs> Don't sign up for the NDA emails on your regular email address that you get uh, all your rest of your stuff in Yes, because it will get lost. Yeah. So that, well, that was that, my biggest. I, that I always tell new MVPs too, is that it, it's a, uh, and there are so many of those uh, so many of those in, in emails. So for everybody else that watch it, it's, it's, uh, I mean, you have these NDA calls with the various parts of the product teams that are out there. You've got like a monthly call with your category. So there's a business applications call. I've got my M365 apps and services monthly call, but then there's half a dozen others. Like I'm involved in the teams stuff. I do some power platform stuff. I'm involved in uh, Microsoft for startups calls. I'm involved, like there's a bunch of different things. And sometimes it's overwhelming. They'll send you a list of like, here, everything that's going on. And not surprisingly, some of them overlap. And so you yeah. got to make a decision of which one you want to go to. Um, and uh, and so like, uh, you know, like the Viva stuff that I was really getting involved in the last year and a half all of them overlap the other existing ones. And so I just had to make a decision and, uh, you know, just don't make many of the Viva calls, watch recordings instead. So yeah. it's it's easy to get, uh, you know, it, too wrapped up in that. So uh, my advice is always like, you don't have to say yes to everything. You know, watch the recordings, but uh, other, otherwise, you know, then somebody at your company is asking, it's like, why are you on so many of these calls? <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's been interesting because I'm the first MVP for our company. Our company is only 140 people. They've been around for 15 something years, but they've never had a Microsoft MVP before. And so I got it. And as soon as I was nominated, I was like, oh, I can't say anything. I can't say anything. If I say anything, I'm going to jinx it. And then I let it slip in a meeting with a whole bunch of people. And I was like, oh gosh. So then I had like, send a quick message to our our three like the three partners who basically started up our company and I was like hey guys so just wanted to let you know before like made it through the grapevine that I got a a nomination for Microsoft MVP and yeah (laughs) so just heads up and I think all of them, like, this is the most amazing thing ever this is so cool this is really going to help us as far as like moving forward within the the what we're trying to do mm-hmm. as an organization and I was like 
hundred percent. Like MVPs, we we get access to some of this information before it goes live and public, and it helps us to then better, you know, move our clients in the appropriate direction for the changes that are coming. So if we want to be the best MSP in the world. Right. Then, you know, well, what better you know, way to, to what's do surprising that? Surprising about that, how many, how many leaders, and I've worked for companies that have, I, I've been now almost 12 years as an MVP, and and I've worked for a couple of companies where they were not supportive at all, mm -hmm. uh, and and, uh, and so, and I just had to be very careful that I'm doing MVP things, my evenings, my weekends, you know, kind of my time, and yeah. which made it difficult even to join calls, um, but uh, sometimes. You know, which is just unfortunate because it's it's just short sighted because it's it's just a huge. Uh, it is an advantage to companies to have yeah. MVPs as employees. You have that visibility. You have a that louder voice within the community to be able to go do things. It's going to open up doors for customers and partners and Microsoft access and lots of things. Yeah, so. and especially for for customers because I I've using yeah sorry excuse me words <laughs> but talking to Matthew Devaney and talking about, you know, how much work that he's been doing in the community, because he's been really helpful as far as helping me build up my blog and get that going. But, you know, talking to him, he says, you know, he gets people, customers now who reach out to his company and want to do work because he's a part of that company, mm -hmm. you know, so even just getting your name out into the community, out onto the interwebs and people finding you and be like, hey, I want to I want that person to come work on my project. Yeah. Like that's even more like street cred, if you will, yeah. for your company. Yeah. So, you know, that, that brings in some, some dollars sometimes. So I don't know. It's, well, it's kind of cool. What, so what, what, uh, what things are you passionate about right now? Like what, what technologies, what things are you really like, what are you talking about presenting on right now? So really what I want to present on and it's, kind of a funny story with David and Hugo, they've now called me the JSON whisperer, um, <laughs> is, you know, I find JSON to be incredibly helpful, especially because I'm working in Power Apps, I'm working in Power Automate, Power BI, I'm also like in that space, like the big three, if you will, of the Power Platform. Mm -hmm. um, and just getting people to understand the difference between what is a number and what is a string. Like if I have a one and it's just by itself, that one is a one, it's a number. But if I have a one and it's in double quotes or single quotes, that's a string. And there's a big difference in the way that the system is going to handle those. And if you need it to act as a number, you're going to have to make a transformation if it's a string. If it's a number and you need to act as a string, you're going to have to do a transformation that way too. Mm -hmm. So understanding data types, um, but also just understanding how to use the various tools, like specifically within power apps. Like I might have, you know, walked myself into a hole with Michael Roth and, you know, said that I was going to do a whole blog series on the, the power apps forms control and, you know, understanding that because he just randomly put out on Twitter. He's like, so what, what have you like mastered lately? And I was like, forms controls. I own those things now. I know exactly when things go into the control, when they get manipulated through the control and how they get out of the control. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what? I want to see this. So I tried to put it forth for MPPC 23. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't get selected, but that's not to say that I have no hopes for it getting selected in other events in the future. So I, I do plan on, on giving that presentation if it will get selected. Well, you know, that's the kind of thing. There's lots of user groups and regional events that would love that kind of stuff. So like I'm, I, 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 we were talking about, I'm more, I got a session I'm doing in, in August in Australia, which I'm going to do after that. I'm actually, it's a larger event, but I'm going to be kind of cutting my teeth on that one, trying some things out. And then mm -hmm. I've got some user groups that I'm going to be doing later in the fall around it to, to further refine it. And then we'll likely, and this is for those that don't present, I, I already have an idea of splitting that into at least two different sessions. So with two different titles, but built off of that same content based off of the feedback, based off of, you know, those, those interactions or lack of interaction that's mm -hmm. very telling as well, but 
you know, you constantly evolve those things and try things out. But yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I've definitely thought about doing the user groups because it seems like the user groups, you have more opportunities to present, mm -hmm. whereas you also don't have to necessarily be in person sometimes. Right. And me being here in Florida and some of these user, user groups being all over the place, like it would give me more of an opportunity to get out there and give those presentations yep. than an in-person event at a conference where everybody's there and they're paying lots of money for and it's just all over the place it's a different so. level of stress around that it's it's uh yeah it can be nerve-wracking depending on because you want to give quality you want to give people what they want and need for that but, yeah you know user group you can be a bit more relaxed and make it more of an interactive more of a conversation share yeah. what you've done the, the ideas there and then talk about it so it's yeah. just different I wish that a lot of the bigger events were more like that. Yeah. Well, so I just went to EPPC 23. Mm -hmm. It was a fantastic event, but there were so many sessions that I wanted to go to that I had to pick and choose which ones am I going to. Yeah. And if they would have just allowed even just not just the slides, but some of those presentations, because a lot of the slides with the content that was being given, it was demos. Mm -hmm. So you know, without seeing the demo and you have three or four slides that are like, Hey, this is what we're going to do here. And this is what we're going to do there. Right. You, you don't really get not the as content. useful. Right. Yeah. 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 So. That's, well, that's, Hey, that's been the benefit. One huge benefit of doing hybrid is being able to make a lot of that content more accessible, but now as in-person yeah. events start springing up again, I know plenty of people, uh, uh, long time MVPs that, don't record their sessions because they only do they only do those sessions for paid training or paid events and yeah. so that they hold on to that intellectual property which can't blame them that's their it's their right it's ticket. their yep. you know yeah. that but, if somebody's going to pay for it i totally understand you know keeping that under lock and key yep so well very cool well cat great meeting you and and talking about your your origin story here so it's, uh, that's the way i would like to phrase it anyway <laughs> so for folks that want to reach out with you connect with you like where do they find you where are you most active in social um so i'm active on linkedin and twitter both of them as you're a wizard cat but you're as in hagrid saying you're y-e-r a wizard cat so that and then my website is your wizard cat.com very cool. Well, I'll have those course links that are out on the blog post. It'll be out on the YouTube and out on, uh, you'll be able to find it out on the podcast as well. And I uh, hope to see you. I'm sure you'll be there at the uh, uh, at the next MVP summit next spring. But I uh, are you doing the, the, uh, the Power Platform event in Vegas as well later this year? I will be there. Okay. Yes. I will probably <laughs> be there as well. So, so we may have to catch up there. Yes, I know uh, Lindsay and Natalie, uh, Lindsay Shelton and Natalie uh, Linders were both talking about, yes, we're, we're going to be there and we are going to, you know, celebrate our MVPs while we get, or when we get there. So Very cool. we're, we're getting around to drinks to, to celebrate. So, well, congratulations again on your new MVP. Thank you. I appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Yep. Thank you for having me. Have a good one. <laughs>